JJ put that shot up the end. Which one? <laughs> really? The, 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 yeah, the, the, one the circus the shot? <laughs> right. You, uh, I mean, we've seen him do stuff like that. And really, when you look at our offense, the last two minutes, you know, the really the four threes, Robert had that big three, Robert, JJ had three of them. Um, you know, you just feel like stuff like that seals games. 50% across the board with, you know, shots behind the arc and also above the arc. Is this kind of what you envisioned when JJ was signed? I mean, that's what he does. When you look at sort of just the history of who he is and, and the, st the statistics that back it up, you know, that's what he does. And when you sort of bring somebody in and you say, what is the NBA identifiable skill? It's not hard to reach for what his is. And like anything, you know, it, it forms a team. And his skill set completely complements Joel Embiid's and Ben driving it and finding him. And, you know, tonight we, we all saw J.J. at his best, you know, when it mattered the most. And, um, you know, he, he really, in the environment that we were playing out of, we lived in this sort of look, he, he really maximized the look. He doesn't allow people to tag rollers. Joel had two missed dunks because they hugged up on J.J. But uh, all over the place, he creates that type of environment. And, and you know what? If Ben and I sat in a room, I would say to him, I thought you were, you know, you were C plus. And then you come out and, you know, he had 11, 11, and 14. And it just shows, like, when we come in and say, hey, he was an A minus, a B plus, and, and he's rolling out, you know, larger numbers to be able to say, I thought he was okay tonight. But to look at a stat sheet confirms he just peppers stat sheets. He really can litter a stat sheet because of how active and athletic he is. For a lot of your time here, late game situations were by committee. How does it change it for you when you have a go-to like JJ now? Well, if you, if you look at the, it's more the environment. Um, we take our three best players and let them play the last five minutes. We, we did it in Detroit. We did it in Houston. You know, we did it the other night. We did it tonight. And, you know, there's a look that we play out of, you know, when there's five minutes left and a game is close. So we just don't touch in the meat of the game. And the look and in the environment, I, I hope, complements each other where they can produce space. And I feel like to say we're going to, like, go through Joe, there's a lot of truth to that. Or free up JJ, there's a lot of truth to that. Or let Ben play an open space with a pick and roll, there's a lot of truth to that. But to put them in an environment where you can have all those things is the thing that interests me the most. And I think that the execution down the stretch uh, has been really good lately for us to close out those games. Brett, does it excite you that I don't think you guys have really played a complete game yet? Like you're, obviously, you're getting good performances from different guys. But even without getting like a, a really good team performance, you're still getting these wins and you're executing like that down the stretch? Because you can say, like, I thought our middle pick and roll defense stunk tonight. And I thought at times our defense in transition stunk tonight. And when you come in at halftime, you say, they got 42 paints in the points in the paint. Like, that's unheard of in a half. It's way too many. And for the rest of the game, they had 14. I think to be able to isolate and zoom in on an area like middle pick and roll defense you get the attention a lot more after a win to say we won, but look at how poor we were here. And imagine, to your point, if we can get better at that. And so that's the exciting part. You know, this group is so, at times, painfully young with just crazy turnovers or, you know, things that aren't sort of going to script. But they play together, they play hard, and those things, uh, like a middle pick and roll defense, sure is a lot easier to talk about after you win. Rashawn helped out with that in the second half when he came in? Completely. And so, you know, he, 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 he's available and you have a decision. You just know he's there. And I thought that Amir was okay, but I thought, you know, we need a little bit of a jolt. And, and, light, and Rashawn is sort of a lightning bolt off a bench with his energy and his speed. I like him rolling more than popping. He's a dynamic roller. And I thought to bring him back in, you know, and play a strong 10 minutes in the second half and do what he did, 
it was uh, it was a tremendous boost for us. When Joel has the foul trouble, I know that it, you, the game suffers because you can't have him in to do the scoring that he does. But what is it? How does it affect the tempo for you guys? Well, Rashawn plays with a whole new pace. Like you, you put Rashawn out there with like TJ and Ben and Luau was out there, and I think Jared was with him. That that's the fastest pl people we have. And, you know, they all happen to be on the court as a team that we have. And so the speed of the game changes. And I like the energy of that group. And, you know, then you come back in with more, you know, bulk with Joel and Dario, and it's a different game. I thought when Joel got his fourth foul to, to let Rashawn ride it out um, helped our team. I, I'm learning with the new NBA rules of how you hoard timeouts well, you can, you can hold on to a two, and then you get your two at the end, and you can manage a game with Joel a lot easier. You really, I can look down the bench and put him in with seven minutes and not feel like he's going to fatigue at two because we can stop the game. It's different this year. And I feel like Rashawn came in and spelled Joel well. Right, did you realize the first time the team's been above 500 in four years? I didn't even realize that. You know, somebody asked me that before, and I, I, I completely mean this. My sort of vision line is so much broader. I do understand, and we're, we're proud of that, but it's, I'm, I'm very sort of focused on other things, and, and we're still growing. You know, to, to Kyle's point, to be able to take and grow the team and still win and take some hits. Like, we're still figuring stuff out, you know, on rotations and positions. And I think that we have so much more to give. That's the exciting part. On, uh, on Joel, the double before the bounce. How do you... Um, the what? The double before the bounce. What do you mean by um, that? Before he gets the dribble. The um, double team? The double team comes. Yeah, right. What's, what's uh, the, the technique? How do you teach him... This is, and I lived this privileged life with Tim Duncan for 12 years. And so, like, we had a course. It was like post spacing, you know, calculus. It was, it was, you get your masters. And when you start watching game sevens, which I saw a lot of in playoff series, you really saw different ways that he got double teamed. And there were common things that no matter which way they came from, do you come on the catch, you come on the bounce, you come from the top, you come from underneath. You know, pick them. There's all ways to double a post. What I have learned over my years in that environment with Timmy is there's a core sort of set of rules that can work. It's a Swiss Army knife. You know, then you react to it. I was surprised they didn't come at him sooner after he had scored quite easily. You know, I think at about the six-minute mark, five-minute mark. And they really didn't come as quickly as I thought. But it gets down to post spacing. And he's had, he's quarterbacked the gym the last three games well. I think he's had 15 assists, 16 assists in his last three games prior to this one. If he can do that and still be as dominant as he's been while at 70% of his fitness level, well, as I've said many times, that, that can be the best offense for everybody that we have. I mean, like this is easy to talk about JJ and Ben with the triple double, but Covington somehow quietly was a plus 21. What do you see from him in a game like this? Steady, experience, been with me less, you know, just a little bit less than Joel. We've been with each other a lot. I mean, I, I think that when you write about the game, you should go back and you should see the play that Joel misses the dunk. They have a two on one going down the other end. Bayless smothers the ball and flips it to Ben and Ben over to Covington and bam, you know, hits the three. Th that is a poised shot. And I think in general, Robert, you know, is just one of those steady soldiers that you always feel comfortable having in the game at the end because he can make a shot and compliment Joel. But most importantly, he really can guard. He can switch. He can guard multiple positions. Um, steady. That uh, middle pick middle defense and allowing so many points in the paint, what do you want more out of Joel when he's working down low on defense? Well, if you looked at the most used part when it's a half court game in the NBA, by a mile, the middle pick and roll dominates our sport. And by a mile. And it's like day second of training camp, you know, guarding pick and rolls. 
And so without getting into too much coach speak and technique, there are lots of pieces and the nuances are subtle. And by being great at those nuances, you actually have a chance. Otherwise, it's the hardest part of the sport to guard. Keeps coaches up very late at night. And those things we will look at on tape, but it's an area in general we have to uh, get better at. Is it having consistent three-point shooting? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What would you say having consistent three-point shooting does for the offense when they're shooting at a high rate? It just creates an environment that people can't help on Joel. It creates an environment where you really can't sag on Ben Simmons' penetration. Anything that creates space rules the day. And there is nothing like shooters to create space. And the other good part of that is you get an extra point if you make that shot more than a closer one. It's all good. People, teams that can make threes really become hard to defend. Thanks, Thank you.